Well, good morning, everybody. The Jeff Slakey and uh, Spencer Hughes here on the Daybreak Show. And we have on the phone line Mason County Sheriff Casey Salisbury for the Sheriff's Sit Down, presented by our great friends at our Community Credit Union. Morning, Sheriff. Good morning. How are you doing, Jeff? Well, it's been a, a long weekend. I know that you and I have talked over the years that when the temperatures get hot, uh, sometimes it gets a little hot under the collar. People are doing things that maybe they shouldn't do. And nowadays with coronavirus, and we've all been holed up in our homesteads for two months now, uh, I'm starting to see a lot of folks, even the, even folks that you would on any other day be great, considered long law-abiding citizens, folks are really starting to get antsy, and uh, that can put some more pressure on law enforcement. Yeah, it is. And then, you know, it's the same way for the same way it is for you and I. You stay in the house long enough, pretty soon you need to get out. Um, and, you know, boating, with boating season coming up and people getting on back on the water, those nice days, and we have an influx of people and, and it, you know, have summer homes and things down here. Um, and that, that stresses us every year to have extra people on the water and those kind of things. And the trail systems, there's a lot more people out using those. But, you know, again, Jeff, I've been really, really fortunate here for the most part. Most people are, are being pretty cautious when they're out, they're being pretty respectful of other people for the most part. Um, not doing too bad there. I think people realize the seriousness of this. There's, a, you know, some businesses see it differently that want to open and things with some of the rules that are coming out of the state, but the average community members out here are pretty, pretty respectful of other people. You ha- you're in a tough situation as you are in the community a lot and people know you, they've grown up with you and they uh, lean to you not only because you're the sheriff, but because you've been in the community a lot. Uh, it's got to be hard at, when you are hearing things come down from the governor's office uh, on the stay home, stay healthy orders, but then also are talking uh, with your friends and, and neighbors in Mason County who are looking at this perhaps with not as much detailed information that you get as the sheriff of the county on your daily updates. Um, But but there's a lot of folks that are that are looking for advice. What are you saying to them? Well, I think you'll see in different places. And I get emails about it. They oftentimes it's the same for most of the sheriffs and probably police chiefs, but most of the sheriffs, you know, people want you to kind of give them your stamp of approval on something that they know. Oftentimes, you know, something comes down to the governor's office. They want to know if they're going to get in trouble for it or what I think on that. I said, well, you read the same documents that I read and you need to be mindful of what the consequences are for those. Because a lot of times people are under the impression that the sheriff's office enforces every single thing out of the governor's office. And we don't, a lot of those things that have to do with uh, construction and businesses and things like that, that's how the department of labor and industries. And and if you go out and do something that you shouldn't, uh, you know, you can get fined through, through the state government. Uh, not the sheriff's office. We're very focused on our uh, our criminal investigation and those kind of things. Um, if, if something comes to our attention and, and we, just like the rest of the sheriffs in the state of Washington, the police chiefs, we try to educate people on the safety issues involved. But we've been, again, very fortunate down here that we haven't had people getting way out of line for the most part. Um, and most of the sheriffs in the state have the same circumstances where if people want some guidance from you that really it gets a little out of your area. When they start talking about medical things, I direct them to talk to Dave Windham at the health department or one of your physicians. It's really not our area. What are the bulk of the calls that the sheriff's office are getting these days? Well, our, our regular calls for service, I went down for a while as people were kind of staying home, but yeah, the calls that I see now I'm not out on the road exactly like the, the guys are working the road every single night and every single day but it, it appears to me when I read the calls and I listen to them that the, the, the pent-up anxiety and energy starting to come out people are a little more intense with each other at home not necessarily us sometimes with us but you know the, the domestic violence things and stuff are are accentuated I think because of this people are are frustrated in their neighborhoods if they get upset with their neighbor for doing something you know their uh, calls about something going on in the neighborhood and people are just irritated i think because they're all there so much now they're not used to being around each other as much mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know noise complaints about the neighbor is doing something or they see that the neighbor got too close to the other neighbor and it's like it's not really a tattletale thing that we're looking for here 
you know, it, it's, it's, but it seems to be, we get a lot of those minor, I, I should say minor complaints, but complaints that people feel very strongly about but they're not necessarily criminal complaints either. I interviewed Gina Blanchard Reed the other day from Turning Point, and the topic was domestic violence uh, during the stay-at-home orders where uh, folks are asked to stay at home and potentially in an abusive situation. I've seen online that there have been different types of um, ways that that folks have reached out to domestic violence um, folks who are being abused about how you can call in and if you feel uncomfortable calling or if you're scared to call that somebody may hear you overhear your voice uh is that when people call into the to the sheriff's office to to macecom at 911 talk do you can you familiarize me a little bit with what you know on on how the domestic violence calls uh get put out there and and the rate of response and stuff like that well, anytime somebody calls in to the 911 center, it's a recorded call. So we know where the call is occurring at. Sometimes we'll get what we call a 911 hang up. Somebody will call 911. They may hear some voices in the background or something, and a call line gets hung up. We go to those calls. Every once in a while, you know, quite, I should say quite often, we'll get what we call a 911 hang up, and they'll dispatch us to a resident. And somebody could have started to dial a phone, hit the wrong number, hung up, and it, they have to hit a 911 number or something, emergency number. Or every once in a while, you hear some kids in the background talking and somebody's messed with the phone. But in the case of an actual disturbance where people get into, into a disturbance and you'll hear them calling and they drop the phone line and they hang up, uh, we, we go 911, we go right to those calls. Right. Um, so it's recorded, and when we go there, um, you know, we check, uh, you know, all the normal things if a crime has occurred and those kind of things. And we also give out information. There's information, things that go out to people if, if there's a domestic issue. Um, but, you know, sometimes they're, they're not the call that you think they are. You get there and the disturbance call happens to be some kid fooling around with the phone. We, we get those every once in a while. Or somebody can't quite see the phone, they'll hit 911 or something. But we go to those 911 calls. Friday, we saw the 62nd Air Wing fly over Mason Health. They were over in Thurston County and all over uh, our side of the state honoring uh, those in the front line at the health healthcare workers. Is there anybody uh, that you want to take this time to point out that is that seems like they've been going above and beyond maybe what they've their their job description or anything who you see either in the daily meetings or just out in the community? You know, I, I look out there and, and, you know, of course, you've heard our chaplain speak recently. I, you know, he's volunteer and he comes out and does stuff for us. But I, I look around, like even this morning, we had our Zoom meeting with the elected officials meeting for the county on, on Zoom. And being able to sit down, it's a whole different way of doing business than being in the room together. But being able to sit and talk back and forth. And I look at guys like Dave Windham, uh, you know, guys just doing a tremendous job for us in the area of the in the health department and what he's working on across our county health officer, uh, Dr. Stein, Dr. Gushy. I mean, those guys are just a wealth of inf- professional information that when you have a question about a medical issue, you've got people there that can answer it. And what a wonderful thing it is to have those uh, professionals in our community. I, I see this group of people working together every morning we're meeting, um, just doing a really good job uh, in our communities. I know that uh, 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 Mr. Windham and, and our uh, county elected official, uh, Sharon Traft, she's at that meeting every single morning. Uh, they have worked on applying for that variance to the office of the governor for some of our things here that we think we might be able to open because of our, you know, the, the good things that are going on in our community and the way that things are being handled. Uh, they've applied for that. I don't know what they've got back from that yet. But the application for that should be in or going in, um, asking for some of our businesses, I think, to to do things a little bit differently on that variance like some other counties have. So they've just done a super job of working together and keeping people informed. You know, I, I know it's frustrating. Um, I see Jeff, what, what's really tough is, is I think people, the common average everyday person is out there with a business or something. They see some businesses or some things getting to be open. You know, they'll, they'll see that you can go in uh, to a certain business and do business but yet you can't go into their business. And they're, they're, they're seeing that, why is that happening? Uh, if you watched this last week, 
I, I don't have it with me to reference it perfectly, but they now allow if you buy a meal, you can get, you know, hard liquor mixed drinks or whatever to go. Mm-hmm. If the liquor control board has approved that. You know, I, I most of the sheriffs and chiefs throughout the state are deeply concerned about that and not in favor of that. And you see them being able to do that, but you can't go in, you can't get a haircut. And here, here's the person trying to run, you know, some kind of a barbershop or something. And you can go into one business and get things, but you can't go into the other one. But yet everybody can go into a large business, into Walmart or whatever it is. And they're seeing some inconsistencies and it's making it very, very hard for them. The common sense telling you that it's so inconsistent sometimes in some areas that, that why should we follow the rules? And that, that's difficult. Yeah, I was watching a news report just on that today where someone is able to go into a big box store that is deemed essential because of their food and medicine supplies. But, oh, while you're there, you can go get um, a greeting card or some new clothes, but you can't go to the card store or to the clothes store. Yeah, I see, I see what you're yeah. saying on that. One of them that's, you know, and I just hate to point out any individual businesses because they, you know, they, they have a right to do their own thing, but... I hear people say, why can you go in and get a tattoo, but you can't go in and get a haircut? Some of that's been moved around, and, and it, the the updates come in you know, every day or every other day or whenever they come in from the state of how that works. And, and our counties are very unique. Um, if you go from here over to southeast Washington, the counties over there, it's a very different circumstance. And I have people say, well, the sheriff over here said, mm. well, that county is very, very unique and very, very different compared to our county. And, and, and the distances that people are apart from each other. And, you know, you go over and there's ranchers and things that are way there miles from the next person. You know, it's a little bit different in some areas. So you kind of have to look at the uniqueness of each area. And it's kind of hard to put a, a blanket resolution on a whole state when some places it's a lot different than others. Well, if you need a haircut, Casey, come over. I'll give you one. Oh, you, you'll give me a hand with that, huh? <laughs> I thought I thought Spencer would probably be volunteering to do that too, you know. That's it. Mason County Sheriff Casey Salisbury. It's always nice talking with you during the Sheriff's Sit Down presented by our great friends at our community credit union. And uh, we'll check in again real soon, okay? Okay, thanks, Jeff. Thank Bye-bye. you. Bye.